Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. 3-2 pitch. In the air, deep left center field, hit well. Rodriguez on the run, and it is gone! <laughs> Six hours and 18 innings later, the Houston Astros are moving on in the playoffs. We're going to look at who they play next and the latest on the road to the World Series. Plus, police in California believe they've caught a suspected serial killer that's been terrorizing the West Coast. How they tracked him down, that's coming up in your morning headlines. And yeah, taking a live look out at the Alamo City, waiting for the sun to rise. Ooh, 74 degrees, a little bit of humidity out there. We're going to check in with Justin Horn in just a few moments. Talk about a cold front and possible rain. Whoa, did you see any rain yesterday? No. I Clouds, though. Okay. But nothing really, n nothing actually. Well, first yeah. and foremost, good morning. Good morning. Happy Sunday, <laughs> 6 o'clock this morning. It is October 16th. I gotta say, I think my car got a couple raindrops, Justin, but nothing substantial. Uh, yeah, nothing yesterday, really much at all. Uh, you're going to have to dust off your rain gauges, though, because I think we will actually get to use them for the first time in a very long time with some showers and storms tonight and again tomorrow with a cold front. So that's the big story, right? Our last warm day is today. Temperatures in the 90s for one more day, and then we get some relief tomorrow. That front arrives overnight tonight. And as it moves in, we'll get those showers and storms. You'll get some gusty winds, too, and you'll see a noticeable difference when it comes to temperatures. The, the, the shot at rain, we're talking about a half an inch to an inch, maybe uh, on average around here. So the numbers aren't going to be huge, but at least there is rain in the forecast. And, and this is not the way it looks outside right now. I can assure you of that. Uh, looks like the live cam is showing an old image, but you get the idea. It's 75 degrees. Cloudy skies. Dew point is at 70. There is our front. We can see it here on the temperature map and there are cooler numbers behind this front 24 Casper 38 Omaha 49 Wichita 61 in Oklahoma City in the case that 12 hour forecast uh, we'll see some clouds this morning maybe a little bit of drizzle mostly cloudy skies to start then partly cloudy this afternoon around 91 for a high there is a small chance of a pop up shower storm as we get into the evening hours. And then the rain chances really start to crank up tonight as we said. We'll take a look at that entire forecast. We'll time it all out for you and talk temperatures. Just how cool is it going to be? We'll let you know coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Top of your morning headlines. Big news in the search for a suspected serial killer. Police in Stockton, California say they've arrested a suspect in connection to six murders over the last few months. ABC's Ty Hernandez reports it. It's a person they claim was on a mission to kill. Authorities in Stockton, California, say they've made an arrest in the search for a suspected serial killer. The suspect's reign of terror in our community has come to an end. Tips from the community leading police to Wesley Brownlee. Police say surveillance teams followed the 43-year-old while he was driving and took him into custody around 2 a.m. Saturday morning. They added he was wearing dark clothing and had a mask around his neck. A firearm was also found. We have information that had got us to his place of residence. And at, at, at that point, we, we maintained eyes on that residence until he became mobile. At least seven people had been shot since April of 2021. Six in Stockton, one in Oakland. Six were killed. One woman survived and was able to give police a description. Police had asked for the public's help in identifying this man seen on surveillance video near two of the crime scenes. When the people of our city of Stockton, California, come together and we unite, we can get things done. Stockton will be a place where people can live, raise a family, and grow a business. All the victims were alone, killed while it was dark outside. Ballistics tests helped investigators link all of the shootings. While five of the seven men killed were Latino, authorities have not said whether they believe these were hate crimes. The suspect will be arraigned in court Tuesday afternoon. It is unclear if he has an attorney. Ty Hernandez, ABC News, New York. Another top story we're following. One person dead, seven more injured after gunfire at a house party in Colorado. Neighbors say most of the victims appear to be teenagers. Now, neighbors telling police they heard dozens of gunshots from the party around 3 a.m. A doorbell camera was recording when the gunfight started. A blue car seen driving past the multiple uh, party multiple times. People started to gather outside. The car comes back again, and that's when gunfire rang out.
It hit close to home, like people say, it really did hit close. It's right through my living room. It's like as if like they were in a mosh pit dancing to music, flashing guns, like it was something to joke about. ABC 7 in Denver reporting parents of an injured 16 year old says he's now fighting for his life after two surgeries. And right now police still investigating, trying to figure out who was responsible. Well, police chase in Nebraska came crashing to an end Friday before the case took a big twist. Yeah, state troopers on the scene took the driver, a teen who had vanished from the Houston area into custody. But here's where it gets weird. The body of a woman was found in the trunk of the teen's car. Authorities believe it could be the 17 year old's mother who disappeared last Thursday. The discovery came after troopers located and pursued the car believed to be involved in a homicide in Texas. The Harris County Sheriff says the woman's identity remains unknown at this time. More United States aid is headed to Ukraine as the war with Russia continues. The United States says another round of military aid is worth about $725 million. This latest aid package includes military vehicles, ammunition, and American-made high-mobility rocket launchers. They've been vital on the battlefield for Ukraine. Now, this news comes as Ukrainian forces continue to make important gains against the Russia invasion. After days of missile and drone attacks, Western sources tell ABC News that Russia is rapidly exhausting its arsenal of long-range weapons. And back here at home, Ukrainian organizations in San Antonio rallying around tourist attractions to make a circle, signifying a circle of defense and showing Ukraine they stand with them. So people gathered around San Fernando Church this we weekend to stand with those on the front line. Supporters tell KSAT they want to show that people losing their lives and homes in Ukraine are no different than people here in the U.S. Time now, just about 6.07, 74 degrees out. Still to come, the Astros continue their March. The World Series will look at who they could play next and how much rest they'll get until the next game. And Upset Saturday came early this year for college football. We'll tell you what happened, making these fans go wild, and where the goalpost ended up. Yes, you heard that right. I, and yeah, I know. I, I watched. I was like <laughs> tracking the goalpost. It was like after the game. We would have had uh, KSAT helicopter out there. I know. It. Big deal. All right, 74 degrees. Feeling kind of yucky out there, like a summer morning. But Justin said all that's going to change in the next 48 hours. He'll tell us all about that when we come back. All right, say hello to Bevo, number 22, Texas, rolling through Big 12 play, hosting Iowa State in a game that was. Closer than expected. All right, so final seconds of the first half. We saw some fireworks. There he was. Quinn Ewers firing to Jordan Whittington. A slant five-yard touchdown. Cuero native goes straight to Bevo to celebrate. Longhorns went into the half with a 14-7 lead. Iowa State, though, went up 21-17 in the third quarter. Texas roaring back. Another touchdown. That would hold the game winner. Here we go. Stand by. Quinn Ewers delivering that final strike. And Longhorns go on to win it 24-21. Three in a row wins now, but they face a stiff challenge next weekend on the road against Oklahoma State, who I'm pretty sure just lost to TCU. Meanwhile, UIW was on the road in Louisiana against Nichols, but the Cardinals wasted no time scoring points. Quarterback Lindsey Scott Jr. threw for 327 yards and five touchdowns. The Cardinals cruise 49 to 14. Right now, they're in third place across the Southland Com Conference with four games left till the playoffs. And I got to give a shout out the mayor tweeting about Lindsey Scott saying he should be on the Heisman list. So watch Dang. out now. All right, some other scores to mention. Trinity wins at Rhodes 45 to 0. They're staying undefeated. Mayor Harden, Baylor winning at Texas Lutheran 45-16. And of course, your Texas State unfortunately losing on the road, taking on Troy 17 to 14, a close matchup there. But this was kind of the game of the day in my opinion, you know, Michigan swept Penn State. So we got to mention a huge upset last night, kind of. Tennessee taking down number one or number three ranked Alabama. I'm so used to them being number one. So fans obviously going crazy in Knoxville. Not only, look at that crowd, not only did they rush the field, but they took down the goalpost to celebrate the win, and they took it to the river, literally throwing it into the river. And with that win, Tennessee snapping a six-game losing streak to the Crimson Tide. And I got to give a shout-out because I'm pretty sure Mike Osterhage's son was actually one of the people at the game. Was he carrying the gold? You know, I'm not going to incriminate him <laughs> like that. It's not out of the realm of possibility. Right at the end of the game, I immediately, they saw, they, 
um, one, someone that obviously is with Tennessee started taking down the padding because they knew. They knew. They knew it was happening. It was <laughs> like, a wild game. People too. started spilling over. They're like, oh, let's. Yeah. And uh, then but there it went. For those who didn't watch, Alabama had a chance to win it with a field goal they missed. And then Tennessee just marching down the field, Justin Horn. Like 15 seconds left. Crazy. They made it happen. And by the way, those kids are still partying. Like that, <laughs> that has not ended. Oh, to be young. Uh, right? <laughs> Sleep is such a good thing. Uh, let's take a look at the temperatures here across the state of Texas and to our north. There is a cold front coming in, and this is the front we've all been waiting for. Feels like it's taking forever to get here, right? But it will. It'll get here tonight. And once it slides through, you'll feel the difference. 57 in Amarillo, 63 Wichita Falls. I'll tell you, the cooler air kind of lags behind this front a little bit, but it is coming down the plains. And we notice some of the cooler temperatures to, in, to the north. 24 Casper, 31 Bismarck. That is that colder air. Now, it's not going to be that cold here, but we'll feel some of the cooler temperatures coming up. Here is the uh, satellite and radar. You can see showers and storms lining up along the front. I like the uh, Red River north of Dallas. That's where some heavy rain is falling right now. You see the Texas Panhandle getting some rain. And yes, in the higher elevations of New Mexico, we're seeing some snow coming down this morning. So that gives you an idea of just how cold this air mass is. We've also got an upper level low off to the west. So this is a pretty good setup for rain. I don't know that we're going to see just a, a huge numbers when it comes to rainfall, but any little bit at this point, uh, we'll take it. Dew points are very sticky this morning. We're have a, we have a dew point of 70 uh, north of the front. You've got the, uh, the lower dew points, and we will eventually get some of that drier air in here as well. But in the meantime, it's all about the humidity. If you're stepping outside this morning, know that the air is very, very thick. It does feel like a summer morning out there. And there's the scene. We've got mostly cloudy skies to cloudy skies, 75 and southerly winds at about eight miles per hour. Now we've got some ingredients there today as this front gets a little bit closer to the point where we could see an isolated strong storm or two. There's a risk of that. Gusty winds and isolated hail would be the, the main threat. So that's west of San Antonio, so along the Rio Grande. Something we'll watch. I don't think it'll be widespread, but we do need to mention that. So let's look at the forecast here. As we head into the afternoon, this is 5 o'clock, 20% chance of rain, just a few pop-up showers or storms. Here comes our front slowly moving in, and by midnight, we'll bring the rain chance up to 40%. I think along the front, we should get some action. And then as it moves south, we'll see the rain chances start to pop up even more 60 percent so our better rain chances are actually behind this front and you can see some of the pockets of heavier rain especially out west and i think that's probably where the best rain chance will be and the highest totals will be this rain continues though even into tomorrow afternoon 40 percent chance at four o'clock and then by say 10 o'clock we're starting to see things wind down a little bit but that's what you'll notice the gusty winds and the those cooler temperatures rainfall potential I'd say up to three inches out west and then here around San Antonio and the rest of the area up to an inch, but that's in the isolated spots. So most of us could be looking at about quarter, half an inch, maybe a little bit more. It's just going to depend on where some of that heavy rain sets up, but that's the general idea. And then tomorrow, expect some gusty winds where we could see gusts up to around 30 miles per hour throughout the day. That is uh, that's fairly strong and you'll you'll notice that too. 74 at 9 a.m. We'll be around 88 by 2 o'clock today. Our high temperature 91. We start to add in those rain chances this evening and then tomorrow. Big changes temperatures in the 60s. I think the numbers actually fall throughout the afternoon. We're down to 65 by 5 p.m. Notice the rain chances there 60% best first half of the day. Extended forecast. 68 Tuesday, skies will clear, and then 72 Wednesday, 79 Thursday, lows in the 40s, what? Wednesday and Thursday morning. Brace yourself. That got significantly lower. I think, what was it, 49? And now 49 we're saying 47. Yesterday. Yeah. 47, that's like almost 45, which is almost 39. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you know you can just ride that train down to zero, which is almost 30, which is almost 25. But yes, Justin Orrin, thank you so much. I like so your much. logic, sir. Yeah. <laughs> It's a slippery slope over there. Girl, Time now. Girl, look at trees. 617, 74 degrees out. All right, still ahead. We're shedding a spotlight on a new high school sport as we swim through the playoffs. Don't miss the action coming up before 6.30 a.m. And after the break, look at those Astros. One step closer to the World Series. A dramatic ending to a Seattle road trip. That's next in just a few moments. 
All right, all eyes were on Seattle this weekend in the world of baseball. The Mariners hosting the first home playoff game since 2001. Sorry, Mariners fans. Well, the Houston Astros needed this one just a little bit more, clinching a five-game series. They won both matchups this week in Houston. So, obviously, all Astros fans pumped for the game. Great pitching, though. Keeping the game tied at 0 for 18 innings. Basically, two games. So, let's fast forward. There we go. Six hour marathon Astros rookie shortstop Jeremy Pena hitting a solo shot center field. Stros lead 1 0 after that and really taking the life af uh, right out of T Mobile Park. Luis Garcia would retire this side in the bottom of the 18th. And there we go. Your Houston Astros win 1 0, sweeping the series 3 0, advancing to the ALCS for the sixth straight season. Game one could be next Wednesday. And we say could be because two other games, Phillies beating the Braves 8-3, winning their series. And in a game Astros fans have to have their eye on, the Cleveland Guardians beating the Yankees 6-5, to mm. taking a 2-1 series lead. So that is why it's a tentative schedule because whoever wins that series, how long it will go, that will dictate the Astros' next opponent. Let's go, Strauss. A lot of hate on the Yankees on Twitter. You got to throw it out there. I mean... I'm an Astros fan, so no comment. Time now, 622, <laughs> 74 degrees out. Up next before 630, we're hitting the pool for the high school water polo playoffs. How local teams are doing when we come back. This morning, we reached the area round of the first ever UIL water polo playoffs. So local action wrapped up this weekend at Northside Aquatic Center. Brendan Girls facing off against Clark. Let's take a look at the action. Bears striking first. Allie Westendorf hauling in the pass, fired top corner, goal, bang. Brandon roared out to a 4-0 lead before Clark cut it leading in half. The Bears eventually pulling away from there, moving on with a 12-7 win. This is the first year, so we feel like we want to make our mark, make sure our school knows there's a water polo team, make sure we get people out here to our games. So it definitely feels like we're starting off to, a, we're getting a great start. All right, so next up, Bears will take on the health careers in the third round next week. You can find more boys' water polo playoffs highlights from Bernie Champion, Alamo Heights, and Clark. Right now, just head to the BGC page at KSAT.com. And, of course, we got SAFC officially closing out the regular season. A 2-2 draw against Orange County SC. Christian Prano netting a beautiful equalizer for SAFC in the 46th minute as the top team in their conference. San Antonio will now enjoy a first round playoff bye before hosting the Western Conference semifinals. So mark your calendars, that game next Friday, October 26th. And I gotta say, SAFC not only doing a great job on and off the field, their jerseys. They like put out some custom jerseys to like, you know, yeah. bring some attention. I think they have a breast cancer one that is beautiful. So I gotta get me one. Okay. There you go, SAFC. Heard Shout you know. out. <laughs> Time now, 627, 74 degrees out. All right, still at it, 630, light the way. Back on campus at Incarnate Word, and organizations are already competing to bring home this year's top prize. Plus a dream vacation or important business trip. It can fly off the rails after an unplanned travel nightmare. How being socially savvy can give you an edge. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. 6.30 this morning, it is October 16th. I feel like we were spoiled in the beginning of the month because we woke up, low humidity, yeah. 50s. Now, Justin Horn, it feels like we're back in July to start the day. Yeah. It's, uh, it's soupy out there. We have a lot of humidity. Uh, it, it came back in, but look, guys, it's, it's today and today only because after today, cold front comes through. We feel all the fall like changes coming up tomorrow. And uh, it, I'd say this is our first kind of real front of the season. So right now, yes, it is humid out there. 75, 74 in New Braunfels, 72 in Gonzales, 70s to go around. We're not going to get much cooler than this because we have so much humidity in the atmosphere right now. And temperatures today are still going to get awful hot. We're still looking at 90s for highs. But we will add in some small rain chances this morning to account for any drizzle or very light showers that come through. Noontime, partly cloudy, 84. And then we get up to 91 this afternoon, 10% chance of rain. Then we bring it up to a 20% chance as we get into this evening. And that's because that front gets a little bit closer. Moves through overnight tonight. And then tomorrow, that's when our rain chances peak. We're talking about a 60% chance. It's not just that, though. We've got clouds. We've got rain. We've got gusty winds. 
and temperatures may actually tumble throughout the day tomorrow. We start off in the upper 60s, close to 70, but we fall into the mid 60s, maybe even lower 60s by tomorrow afternoon. Have the jacket, have the umbrella, all that fun stuff Friday as we head back to work and school tomorrow. And we're going to talk more about that forecast and the rest of the week coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Justin. Nearly two weeks after 17 year old Eric Cantu was shot by a former SAPD officer, his family says he is struggling on life support. The family gave an update on his condition on Saturday through a statement from their attorney. It says in part, quote, day 12's night was one of the most horrible nights this far, aside from the night that he was shot. Daily progress is slow, if any at all, but setbacks like this put us in fear of his journey forward, end quote. The statement goes on to say the family will wait to make a public appearance until Eric's condition improves. They appreciate the support. Cantu was shot by James Brennan back on October 2nd. Right now, Brennan is charged with two counts of aggravated assault by a public servant, but is out of jail on bond. Meanwhile, arson investigators say a man who made good on a bad promise is behind bars this morning. They say he threatened to torch an apartment building after getting evic evicted and then carried out the plan. So take a look, it happened Friday afternoon. This is the 800 block of Quincy Street. Police say this man, 39-year-old John Lopez, evicted from his apartment earlier that day by Bear County constables. An arrest affidavit says a witness reported Lopez making threats about burning down the building. When investigators questioned Lopez, he denied setting the fire or making threats. However, he was caught on camera walking around the property with a gasoline can in his hand. When investigators told him about the video, Lopez stopped talking and asked for an attorney. Well, two people, including a former BCSO deputy facing charges connected to a drug smuggling operation at the Bear County Jail. So an arrest affidavit says deputies intercepted a phone call about an alleged drug exchange. It was between a 24 year old woman, Halisha Neely, and a 24 year old inmate, DeAndre Ross. Deputies followed Neely from her job as she allegedly made a drug deal with a man in a vehicle. That man, 20 year old Isaiah Palomo, was a BCSO probation officer. Fellow deputies pulled him over and found stashed cocaine inside some paperwork. Palomo was fired. Members of a family now trying to figure out what comes next after losing their northwest side home to a fire. Four people were home, some of them even napping. That's when the home went up in flames around two. Now, all four people and their pets did make it out safely. The home on the 7900 block of Candle Bend, not too far from Loop 1604 and Balance Crossing. The fire leaving behind extensive damage. The roof pretty much burned off, a lot of the contents there. So there is a fireplace um, also in the, within the deck. So we're looking at that area as being a, a point of origin. Firefighters had to work quickly, keep the flames from spreading. The heat from the fire did reach another nearby home and garage, causing some minor damage. Happening today, free American Sign Language classes are back after two years due to the pandemic. MacArthur American Sign Language Honor Society students will be teaching free sign language classes. It's happening every Sunday from 3 to 4 till November 20th. Classes will be held at Brook Hollow Library off of Hymer Road. If you plan on attending, you'll be learning the basics of ACL and deaf culture. Well, there's a lot going on in and around San Antonio, and that's why we have two special leading essay interviews throughout the morning. Now, early voting, obviously right around the corner. So many questions when it comes to various elections. At 8 a.m., we are going to be joined by Professor John Taylor, Professor of Political Science and a Department Chair at UTSA. Startup Week also here in San Antonio, that starts today. So we're going to be joined with the COO of Geekdom, talking about Startup Week, talking about the rise of technology here in the Alamo City and the future of the tech sector. So we'll see you this morning at 8 and 8.30. All right, looking ahead, UIW's Light the Night or Light the Way is back on campus for the 36th year. It's an amazing event. On top of the Festive Lights, campus will be covered in decorated boards. So 23 different organizations are working on their boards for a contest. Top prizes will go to the best design, representing the mission of the university, the spirit of the holiday season, and overall general appearance. 120 students showed up on Saturday to kick off the holiday season in San Antonio. I think it's cool because it's a lot of students in the community like um, participating to decorate the school for Light the Way and being able to like be here with like our organizations is pretty cool. 
So there's still a chance for you to get involved in voting for the People's Choice winner. So submit your vote through the UIW Facebook and Twitter pages. Light the Way begins the Saturday before Thanksgiving. So I know that Halloween obviously coming up real fast. But I know. Light the Way is always one of the best light shows around San Antonio because you beautiful. drive down Broadway, you see it, and you just like put on a smile. I know, and then you have to take time to walk through the campus, and mm -hmm. you're just like this the whole time. You feel like a toddler, just like all over again, like did reaching you, for the uh, lights. <laughs> did you see the Yoda poster? I, I did. Baby, baby Yoda. Sorry. 637. Grogu. Four degrees. Uh, you lost me. All right. Still ahead on GMSA. Quick thinking by a Florida deputy defeats a car theft and kidnapping. Don't miss this wild video caught on camera. Plus, a dream vacation or an important business trip. Well, it can fly off the rails rather quickly after a travel nightmare. After the break, how being socially savvy can give you an edge. 74 degrees at 637. Yeah, feeling like a muggy summer morning, but that's all going to change. Next 48 hours, Justin will break it all down for us about this cold front coming in when we come back. KSAT 12 presents another Day of the Dead story. Building the ofrenda. Ofrenda means offering, and on November 1st, these altars welcome back our loved ones to the world of the living. They're built with many pieces and parts, and each of them has a specific purpose. Fire is one of nature's four elements, so candles are very important for any ofrenda. The glow of the candle is believed to help guide back the spirits to the world of the living. Placed along the altar's bottom level or entrance, they create a welcoming path for your loved one. More are usually placed around the altar to not only illuminate, but to honor the souls of the forgotten. Maybe a great, great tia that you never knew wants to pay you a visit. But don't burn the house down, so keep one of these around. Looking ahead, more than 53 million people will be traveling for the upcoming Thanksgiving holiday with even more for Christmas. But did you know Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter could help you while you travel, especially if you have a complaint? RJ Marquez explains. After two years of staying put, millions of Americans are traveling again. And with that comes travel headaches. Airlines, customs, internet, I could go on. I had a bomb called in at a, in a plane landing in Charlotte, and we were on the tarmac for three hours. Left at Atlanta Hartsfield Airport for uh, 24 hours and was put up at a $30 hotel. But how do you get help? Travel companies say they've become more responsive to social media channels. Consumer experts say some ways are better than others to get your complaints noticed. Don't follow the crowd and resist the urge to publicly shame a company off the bat. Instead, give their regular customer service channels a try first before taking it public. And don't be platform specific. Don't just send out a tweet. Reach out to all platforms to try and get the answers you need. And tell the truth. Companies will more than likely shrug off a false online review. Before tweeting or posting, go to LinkedIn first. Experts say LinkedIn is a smaller social media network and executives are more likely to respond there first. One last tip, the airline industry is one of the fastest when it comes to speedy answers on social media. According to a recent study, airlines generally answer customers' questions on Twitter in a little over 90 minutes and Facebook replies average about five and a half hours. You may not know travelers and customer service representatives use Twitter and Facebook to actually make rebookings, requests, cancellations, and more. Travelers also report direct messages to companies instead of public tweets or posts are more likely to get addressed. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. So have you ever complained about no, a flight on no, social media? No, no. I, I, why are you giving me, like, I'm the kind, no. Like, a, like I'm a complainer, Max, come on. Max is <laughs> <laughs> just Look, more note about you. Because I complain, I complain to you guys. If but there was ever I someone I would say the least likely to complain ever, let alone on social media, it'd be Justin Horn. I mean, not publicly. I do agree. You do the direct message. Yeah. Let them give them a chance to correct it. I, I liked yeah. a nice phone call where yes. I'll, I'll talk to people in person and. I'll Great story by RJ too, because I wouldn't even thought of LinkedIn. Yeah, well done. I didn't think about that either. Max is a way to do it. Closet complainer. A closet complainer. <laughs> now she's calling you up. Okay. Oh, we better get to weather now. Uh, let's uh, let's look at the water vapor, and we can see that we've got an upper level low off to the west. It, you can see the spin there. It, it, this is just one component of why we have rain chances now in the forecast coming up tomorrow. 
Uh, as this moves a little bit closer, that gives us some lift. And then we have our frontal boundaries. So those two things combined, it means we've got a, a decent shot here at rain. We can see that the rain is already lining up along that frontal boundary across North Texas. Some pretty good rain in the Texas Panhandle along the Red River, and then even some snow in the higher elevations here of New Mexico. Just to give you an idea that, yeah, this is some cool air. This is finally a real front for us. That front slides south today, and as it does, it will run into some humidity and out ahead of the front. There's a possibility that we could see a couple of strong storms. I think probably later this evening into tonight. It's not a huge chance. It's low end, but we do need to point this out. Hail and gusty winds would be the main threat if we do see any stronger storms. As we go outside for you, we've got cloudy skies, 74 degrees at the airport, 74 Stinson, 74 Kelly, and 73 at Randolph, and a lot of humidity. 73 in Uvalde, 71 Gonzales, 74 right now in New Braunfels. So temperatures are pretty uh, consistent around the area. And that's because it's just humid anywhere you go. You'll find dew points in the 60s and 70s. And so the air is, is very, very thick. Uh, as we look at the forecast here, by this afternoon, this is around 5 o'clock, uh, partly cloudy skies, 20% chance of rain. Most of it's still going to be to our north. That front hasn't quite made it in yet by this time. But by midnight, here it comes. We'll start to see more showers and storms developing along the front. And then as it slides through behind it, some good chances for rain. So this is 7 o'clock, 60% chance of rain. Couple of things of note here is you send the kids off to school tomorrow. Umbrella, jacket, long sleeve shirts. It's going to be chilly most of the day with the, the cloudy skies and that chance for rain. And the morning commute could be a little hairy too with the rain coming down, so just a heads up. 40% chance by four o'clock, rain starts to shift south. And then by say 10 o'clock, I think our rain chances are beginning to go down. Uh, how much rain could we see? I don't think it's gonna be a huge number. Uh, some places could see up to an inch of rain depending on where some of the heavier rain sets up. But we think out west along the Rio Grande is where we could see some of the biggest totals. Uh, just something to watch uh, here in San Antonio. I, again, I don't think we're going to see huge numbers, not as much as we would like, uh, but at least there is rain in the forecast. As far as wind gusts go, we are going to see gusty winds behind the front, some gusts up around 30, 35 miles per hour tomorrow out of the north, so that will make it feel a little bit chillier. As our forecast goes today, 10% chance at 9 o'clock, and then 84 partly cloudy noontime. We'll start to add back in the rain chances by 5, 6 o'clock, 20% chance this evening. And then tomorrow, 60% uh, chance of rain to start, 60% chance around 11 o'clock, 50% chance at 2 p.m., and then the rain chances fall off a little bit. But notice what happens with the temperatures, 69 at 11 o'clock, 67, 2 p.m., and then we actually see the numbers fall and by 9 p.m., we're talking about 62. You still got some of those gusty winds. It's going to feel like fall. 68 Tuesday, mostly cloudy. It'll be slow to clear. But once we get clear skies Wednesday morning, then we get down to 47. 72 for high Wednesday, 49 Thursday morning with a high of 79. So there'll be some beautiful days, but chilly mornings. And then we kind of moderate as we head back into the weekend. This is our first big front of the season so don't get caught off guard tomorrow guys oh no i've been waiting for this for the last six days <laughs> <laughs> six days or six months yeah uh yeah <laughs> let's be real about that <laughs> justin Orr, thank you so much 648 74 degrees out all right up next you've seen the hot oh, ship challenge on goodness. gmsa before but now it's sending kids to the hospital uh-oh we'll explain what's going on We'll take a live look at the roadways. A lot of people out and about this morning. Remember, there is some construction going on throughout the weekend. We have all that information right now on KSAT.com. Make sure to check it before you head out the door. Take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, six, nine, zero, fireball five, daily four, one, one, eight, two, fireball one. Your cash five, nine, 18, 25, 30, 34, lotto Texas, one, 17, 28, 34, 36, 41. And are you checking your numbers? I'm checking what if anyone won the. Oh, I think it was 454 million. Ooh, yeah. Here are those Powerball numbers: 32, 37, 40, 58, 62. Powerball 15. Power play five. Good luck. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We just received new information on an early morning shooting on the city's southwest side. San Antonio police say it started with two neighbors arguing and then it escalated to gunshots. One person has been taken to Bamsey after that person was shot. 
They are in serious condition. There are reports of a second victim, but there have been no signs of anyone showing up at a local hospital. So right now, police are questioning several witnesses. Investigators are working to figure out what exactly happened, who is responsible, and what charges could be filed. Make sure to stay with us. We're going to have more information on that shooting and other overnight news throughout the morning. But for right now, we're going to talk about a viral TikTok challenge, apparently making several middle school students in Minnesota very sick. Yeah, the one chip challenge involves eating a tortilla chip made with extremely hot Carolina Reaper and scorpion peppers. Don't do it. Videos. I don't know what a scorpion pepper is. It doesn't sound good. You should probably stay away from it. Yeah, that. so videos of people attempting the challenge are going viral on TikTok and YouTube. Several middle schoolers doing the challenge at Southview Middle School in Minnesota reported eye pain oh. and difficulty breathing. An ambulance was called, but Fortunately, no one had a severe allergic reaction or was seriously injured. All right, headed over to Florida. Quick thinking by a local sheriff's deputy foiled a car theft and a kidnapping. Now, the whole incident caught on camera. Take a look. Still unclear if the thief realized the truck had been or that the truck he stole actually had kids in it at the time he was trying to steal it. A deputy in Hillsborough County saved the day. So Jonathan Pazmino. Alvarez. He was working a separate call. He saw a man running behind his truck yelling, he took my truck with my kids. Now the deputy stopped the truck and in doing so, he saved the two boys ages four years old and eight years old. They were crying. Uh, they were super upset and as soon as they saw me, they lined up, they stopped crying and they pointed out that like, he's not my father. The suspect, Kevin Smith, taken into custody, facing one count of a grand theft of motor vehicle and two counts of felony kidnapping. So thank goodness that he was there to save the day, save wow. the two kids, because it could have been a much more dangerous situation had he not been. All right, time now, just about 6.55, 74 degrees out. Here's what's coming up next on Good Morning America. Good morning. Coming up on GMA breaking overnight, the suspected Stockton serial killer arrested. What we know from California police about the suspect and the moments before he was taken into custody. Plus new details on that fiery uprising at a notorious prison in Iran. Dramatic images coming in after protests sparked clashes between inmates and guards. What the State Department and Iranian state media are now saying. And highlights from the diamond last night as the Phillies knock off the defending champs and the Cleveland Guardians best the Yankees. It's all ahead here on GMA. Welcome back. A father and son fishing off the coast of Jersey, getting a big surprise this week. A hungry humpback whale. Wow, look at your screen. Look at that video. And lucky for us, it was all caught on camera. So Zach Piller and his dad were fishing for bass and tuna when suddenly the massive whale breached the surface and crashed back into the water right next to them. The whale actually tapped their boat, causing it to rock back and forth. But oh thankfully, nobody. Oh, my gosh. Look at that video. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wow. God. Terrifying, but also pretty amazing. No one was hurt. Turns out the juvenile humpback whales, they've been spotted more frequently along the Jersey Shore in recent years. Hey, Justin, you know what the whale said? <laughs> What's that? Well, hello there. Oh, oh my boy. God. Had to. You're not even Yikes. a dad yet. <laughs> Had to. Did you see all the fish coming out before it was he jumped? awesome. Oh, man. Okay, so there is a small chance for some showers and storms this afternoon. Our frontal battery is still up across North Texas. It slowly makes its way through the state. Today it's still hot and humid, 91. But tomorrow we start off at about 68, 70 degrees, and then temperatures will start to tumble. I think it'll be one of those days where we actually end up cooler than where we started. Decent chance of rain throughout the day, 60% chance as you head off to work and school tomorrow. Can have the jacket, have the umbrella, be ready for the gusty winds too. It'll feel very, very different outside. 68 Tuesday, 72 Wednesday, and the highlight there is some 40s for morning lows, both Wednesday and Thursday morning with low humidity. Finally, fall has arrived or will Ooh. be arriving later tonight, guys. Finally woke up and said, I'm going to be somebody. Yeah. Thank you, Justin. <laughs> We're going to take an hour long break for Good Morning America. We'll see you back here at 8 a.m. See you guys at 8. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. All right, let's take a live look out at the Alamo City Sun. 
Kind of peeking out there. I think it's out. It's just, you know, shrouded by clouds. 74 degrees to start your Sunday morning. How warm will it get today? When will we see rain? Yes, we will see rain. We're going to check in with Justin in just a few moments for now. Good morning. Good morning. It is 8 o'clock this Sunday. We are more than halfway through October. Oh my gosh. I got to say, so July, obviously record-breaking day after record-breaking day. But now, are you okay? I mean, we walked outside. It felt like we were still in summer. I know, but I'm okay because today <laughs> things are all going to change. After today. After today. That's right. Later today. Tonight. Later today. Okay. Are you okay? Are you yeah. ready? You got the blanket ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready for a cold front. I'm ready for some rain. We desperately need the rain. We really need the rain. So, Justin, when yep. will the rain arrive? Well, we think we'll start to see the rain sort of uh, move in tonight, but more so tomorrow. So you'll notice some showers and storms around. We could even see a few strong storms out west this evening. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. But, yeah, rain chances are here in the weather headlines. It's all about this cold front. And uh, it is exciting news to have this cold front come through. Uh, today is our last warm day, really. If you're looking at the seven day forecast, we'll be in the 90s this afternoon. That front comes through tonight. Cooler, windy. We're going to get some gusty winds tomorrow. It'll feel a lot like fall. And then rain, yes, a decent shot at some showers and storms tonight through tomorrow. Right now, 74 degrees, mostly cloudy. Look at the dew points. It's 69, so it's extremely sticky out there if you're walking out the door right now. 73 in New Braunfels, 71 in Gonzales, 73 in Carrizo Springs, 70s to go around. Humidity is going to keep the numbers up this morning. Here's our KSAT 12 hour forecast 77 degrees at 10 o'clock. If you're planning out your Sunday, know that it will be in the 90s this afternoon. And there will be some small chances for rain this evening 88 degrees at 6 o'clock, 86, 7 p.m. More importantly, though, be ready for those changes by tomorrow morning. The morning commute could be impacted. And as you head off to work and school, it will be very, very different. Rain chances 60% on your Monday. So that is uh, that's tomorrow is the day where we have our best shot at seeing some downpours. Do you want to pass this along? This is I-10 at Hackberry. Trans guide showing us that we have a full closure, it looks like, of I-10. And I do believe this is eastbound. Everyone is being forced to exit. Uh, this looks like an accident, and we'll show you here on the uh, on the map, and you can see the slowdown there eastbound. It does look like we have a full closure of I-10, or at least uh, folks are being asked to exit off the main freeway there. We'll have more information on that as it comes in, guys. All right, Justin Horn, thank you so much. Well, new this morning, an overnight argument between neighbors on the southwest side ends with one in the hospital. This is what we know right now. San Antonio police telling us they responded to a call about someone being shot early this morning. When they got there, police say they even heard more gunshots. One person was shot, taken to BAMC at last check in serious condition. Now, there were reports of a second person being shot. Still no signs of anyone showing up to any local hospitals with gunshot wounds. But right now, investigators are still working, still trying to figure out what exactly happened here, who was responsible, and who could be facing charges. A man is in the hospital this morning after crashing into a tree overnight on the city's northeast side. This happened just before 1 this morning. San Antonio police say the driver was speeding eastbound on the frontage road of I-10, drove off the road right into a tree. He was taken to downtown Metro and is expected to be okay. Charges are pending for driving while intoxicated. Well, nearly two weeks after 17-year-old Eric Cantu was shot by a former SAPD officer, Eric Cantu's family says that Eric is still struggling on life support. The family gave an update on his condition yesterday through a statement from their attorney saying in part, quote, Day 12's night was one of the most horrible nights as far aside from the night he was shot. Daily progress is slow, if any at all, but setbacks like this put us in fear of his journey forward, end quote. So the statement goes on to say the family will wait to make a public appearance until Eric's condition improves. They appreciate the support. Remember, Kantu was shot by James Brennan back on October 2nd. Brennan now facing charges, two counts of aggravated assault by a public servant, and he is out of jail on bond. Well, early voting is just around the corner. There are so many questions when it comes to various elections across the Lone Star State. So joining us in today's Leading SA segment is John Taylor, Department Chair and Professor of the Department of Political Science at UTSA. Good morning, sir. Thank you so much for getting up early and joining us. Good morning. So, Professor Taylor, there are so many races around the state. Obviously, one that people are looking at closely, the race for governor. So how does the race look like from your perspective and what issues are, are you focusing on that could actually sway some voters? 
You know, it's fascinating. The, the, the public polling suggests that Beto O'Rourke is down to Governor Abbott by anywhere between four to seven points. Um, I, I, I strongly suspect that the internal polling for the Abbott campaign especially is probably telling him something different. Why? Because of all the negative ad, ads we're seeing all over TV, radio, and elsewhere, um, that tells you that his internal polling probably says this race is a lot closer. Beto O'Rourke is definitely campaigning like it's a lot closer. And so it, it is fascinating because the difference between the two, Abbott is not making many campaign appearances. Beto, of course, is barnstorming the state of Texas, getting enthusiastic welcomes like at UTSA, among other places lately. And so yeah, it, it makes you think that this race may really come down to the wire and that there are certain issues that we're may, we may not be capturing well. For example, the issue related to reproductive choice, abortion, after the decision, the Dobbs decision back in June, overturning Roe. Um, the issue of, of, of gun safety regarding Uvalde and the aftermath of that. Um, but then on the other side, Abbott has been has been pressing the issue of uh, property tax reform, the impact of inflation and how that's impacting people. And so both sides, it's kind of fascinating just to watch how they're advertising because you see where our work is going with the issues that are going to resonate with younger voters, with women, with people of color. On the other hand, you've got Abbott's ads, which are aimed more toward economic development, maintaining where he's where he's been and where he wants to take the state. Are there any other particular races across the state that you're watching closely? Oh, absolutely. The Lieutenant Governor's race between Mike Collier and Lieutenant Governor Patrick, the Attorney General's race between Attorney General Paxton and and uh, and Garcia. Um, you've got a couple of fascinating races as well um, at the local level, um, be they for a county judge between Sakai and DeBerry, um, House District 118 between Lujan and Ramirez, um, it, it, even the uh, even the uh, Barrett County uh, District Attorney's race. And so uh, across the ballot, there are a number of races that are are fun to watch that are relatively close um, or we think may be relatively close. Um, and are definitely, I think, going to be at least compelling to the voters in less than, well, in eight days from now when early voting starts. Now, Bear County has predominantly been blue historically these last few years. And what, we hear this idea of the blue wave across the state. We heard a lot in 2020, whether that's in the legislature or in federal positions. Do you see that coming to fruition this election or anytime soon? Now, this is not a good year for Democrats nationally, and that tends to, to have that tends to have an effect down ballot to state races, which is why Democrats across the state of Texas are kind of fighting a bit of an uphill battle. That said, can they can they, you know, can they defeat the crosswinds, you know, the headwinds that are taking place? Maybe. Um, Beto O'Rourke suggests that they can. Um, the, the problem is, is the way currently Democrats are positioned in the state house and state Senate, it's going to be a, a bit of a reach for them to actually control one or two houses after November. So we know you joined KSAC Q&A to talk about the January 6th commission. What sort of impact are you seeing or that have on the midterms? Um, not necessarily all that much. I think you, positions are pretty solidified between Republicans and Democrats alike on this. You know, Democrats will say, you know, Trump's got to be indicted. Republicans are saying, no, it's a witch hunt. And you're not getting a lot of, I think, movement either way at this point. People are pretty set, at least in their opinions, regarding the January 6th commission, uh, committee. So I'm glad you brought it up in terms of the, the gubernatorial race, where we see one side talking about guns and abortion rights, the other talking about crime and uh, you know the economy and inflation. We keep seeing polls where voters say economy and crime is at the top of their minds. Other than the governor's race, how have we seen candidates address them, whether it's their ads or their campaign styles? It's primarily their ads. I mean, I, I think, for example, I saw an Abbott ad that's been all over the place, watching college football yesterday, seeing it everywhere, um, which, in which he's tying Beto O'Rourke to, to Joe Biden about crushing inflation, about how it's how it's actually interrupting and, and ruining people's dreams and how, you know, join me and support my campaign and we'll, we'll put a stop to this. That's nice. Um, you know, you can also, you know, get reduce male pattern baldness, among other things, too. But that's not going to happen immediately. Politicians love to promise things that often don't happen. All right, Professor Taylor, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Yeah. If anyone missed any part of the interview, we're going to have the full thing throughout the morning, throughout the afternoon. Just head to KSAT.com. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you, sir. Gotcha. Thank you. Time now, just about 810, 74 degrees out. A musical here in San Antonio has a unique way of including the audience during their show. We'll sh play about that just ahead. And coming up behind the kitchen door, 
A local restaurant had not one, but four different unwelcome guests. We're going to give you a look. All right, 74 degrees. It's, I feel like it's kind of like the calm before the storm. Could be literally. Literally. Well, we're having a cold front blow in later tonight, but Justin says it's going to bring some much needed rain. How much rain can we anticipate? He'll let us know when we come back. All right, flies buzzing around a snack shop, moldy lettuce and cheese, and a variety of insects at a fruit store. So these are just some of the violations that inspectors found at San Antonio businesses. Here's a look at behind the kitchen door. El Chango Loco in the 2800 block of Pleasanton earned an 82 on their recent inspection. Cut fruits were being stored in refrigerators that were too warm, and there were containers of corn and pickles without date markings. Several flies were present, the inspector reminding the business to keep the back door closed and to have the AC service to keep the kitchen cool. An employee was seen putting on gloves without washing their hands, and boxes of chips, drinks, and utensils needed to be removed from the floor and placed higher up. A reinspection was ordered. <laughs> Texas meat and grocery store in the 3600 block of Culebra had moldy lettuce and cheese in a cooler. It was thrown out. The reach-in cooler where sausage, eggs, and hot dogs were stored was not the proper temperature. Clean dishes on the drying rack still had food splattered on them. A hand-washing sink was not working, and employees were keeping their open drinks in a deli cooler, and a dark residue around the walls near the mop sink needed to be removed. They were given a score of 83. <laughs> Fruteria La Mission in the 500 block of White Avenue got an 84 on their inspection. Cut fruits and cups were too warm. Other fruits for sale, including watermelon and pineapple, all needed to be removed from the blocks of ice they were stored on. Instead, they needed to be in containers or protective wrap. The ice machine had a black mold-like residue, and there were several crickets, roaches, fruit flies, and house flies throughout the business. Holes in the ceiling needed to be fixed, and a detailed cleaning of the kitchen was also needed. A reinspection was ordered. That's what's behind the kitchen door. Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. All right, time now, just about 8, 16, 74 degrees. So Justin, you know, Sarah's very upset because it's not fall temps yet. And I, and I need some rain, too. Can you do something about that? <laughs> I, I'm going to do something about it right now. Look at that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm with you, though. It has been such it has been such a tough, uh, was it, tough summer and even start to the fall. Now we're finally starting to see some changes. As we look across North Texas, we can pick out where that front is. We've got showers and storms along it. And this is kind of what we have to look forward to. This energy will eventually shift south and we'll have some scattered showers and storms coming up tomorrow. It, the, the front's just not here yet, so we're going to have one more day of warm temperatures. But there is the front right now starting to bring rain to places like Dallas, Fort Worth and along the Red River. Texas Panhandle, there is a flood watch out for parts of West Texas where the rain could be particularly heavy there. And then we're going to watch for a couple of strong storms out West today. I think the risk is really pretty low here, but a few storms could come off the mountains of Mexico and produce some hail and maybe some gusty winds. Something we'll look for, but it's a low end risk for any sort of severe weather this afternoon. As we look outside for you, Mostly cloudy skies, 74 degrees at the airport, and boy, is it humid. Dew points in the upper 60s. South southeast chilly winds at about 7 miles per hour. 71 Kerrville, 74 Hondo, 74 Uvalde, 71 Pleasanton, 70s go around. You get the idea. The humidity keeping temperatures up this morning and we'll eventually make it into the 90s later today. Dew points starting to see some low 70s there in southern Bear County, so that puts us in the oppressive category. Yes, it is sticky out there. All right, let's jump right to the forecast. So uh, here's how I think it plays out today. By 5 o'clock, a 20% chance of rain. Most of the rain is going to be to our north where that front is. This front's kind of slow moving. But by midnight, it begins to move into the area. We'll up the rain chances to 40%. And then by tomorrow morning, 60% chance of rain. This is around 7 o'clock. Showers, a few storms. We'll watch for some heavier rain out west, places like Del Rio and Eagle Pass. But this is significant because... The morning commute, of course, and you're sending those kids to school. You'll want to send them with perhaps a jacket and an umbrella as uh, changes will be underway at this point. And then showers continue across the area into the afternoon, 40% chance. And then by tomorrow night, we'll start to see the rain chances come down a little bit. As far as rainfall potential, how much rain can we see? I, I know we need a lot, 
But the best, uh, I think the highest totals will be out west, places like Eagle Pass and Del Rio, where we could see up to three inches in some cases, isolated cases. Everyone else, probably a half inch to an inch if we're lucky. So that's not a huge number, but it is something, and it's good to see rain in the forecast. For today, 81 degrees by 11 o'clock noontime, 84 partly cloudy. We'll go partly cloudy by the afternoon, 90 degrees, 91 are high. There is a small chance of some showers and storms late this evening, but just a 20% shot, 86 degrees at 7 o'clock. It's tomorrow where we bring those rain chances way up. 68 degrees at 7 o'clock, 60% chance of rain. And I actually think temperatures decrease as we get into the afternoon. So we could be looking at mid 60s by dinner time and it's also windy. I'll caution you there. Gusts could be up around 35 miles per hour out of the north. So windy, cooler and somewhat rainy tomorrow. That's the big change. 68 degrees Tuesday. I think we'll see some slow clearing. Still pretty windy too. Once we get those skies to clear, then we get some good radiational cooling Wednesday and Thursday morning. We'll start off in the 40s both days, afternoons in the 70s. Now that's your fall weather that you wanted, Sarah. Thank you, Justin. You got it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, even going into the weekend, we'll see some pretty nice weather. Yeah, I, I approve. Okay. Two good. days starting in the 40s. You can actually like make soup and eat it and not like sweat while you're eating soup. <laughs> At what time are you sweat? eating the soup? I love soup. At like 6 a.m. when it's going to be the coldest time of the day? Sure. Okay. And make the, <laughs> I, I drink a hot, hot latte. Breakfast of champions. <laughs> time now, 820, 74 degrees out. Go Astros! They are one game closer to the World Series. More on last night's game that had fans on both teams feeling impatient. Oh my God, it was a marathon. I know. Like six hours. But hey, Astro fans can't be too upset this morning. All right, you know who also can't be upset? Anyone who won the lottery. Taking a look at those numbers. Pick three, six, nine, zero, Fireball five, Daily four, one, one, eight, two, Fireball one. Cash five, nine, 18, 25, 30, 34. Texas Lotto, 117, 28, 34, 36, 41. I don't believe there was a winner last night for the Powerball. It was a big jackpot, just under, I believe, 500 million. 32, 33, 58, 62, Powerball 15, Power Play 5. Good morning, welcome back. How about those Astros? Taking to Seattle for the Mariners' first home playoff game since 2001. Didn't go the Mariners' way. Fans obviously pumped for game three of the ALDS, Mariners and Astros. Jump right to the top of the 18th inning. Yes, 18th inning. It's because we had a scoreless ball game. Astros' Jeremy Pena hits a solo shot to center field. The Astros taking a 1-0 lead, finally scoring after six hours of baseball. And as you can imagine, that took the life right out of T-Mobile Park. And Garcia would retire the side of the bottom of the 18th. The Houston Astros winning 1-0, sweeping the three-game series, advancing to the ALCS for the sixth straight season. We had a lot of college games, a lot of college football yesterday. We talked about it earlier this morning. UT won. Big important. But a reminder, some big games today in the NFL. Jets, Packers, Bills, Chiefs, and of course, the game of the day, Sunday night football, Cowboys, Wait, what, Eagles. Wait, what time? What time does that game start? I believe it's 7.20. Oh, I might be in bed already. Well, Are you going to stay up for this game? I'm gonna your do, team? I'm going to do my best, but I, I got to say, it's one of the advantages, one of the many advantages living in Texas because it's 8.20 in the East Coast. Oh, man. I know. How do you think your Eagles are going to do against All right, let's see. Everyone, I, else's, everyone else's Cowboys? I identify with uh, Michael Parsons. He's my guy. Uh -huh. I think he's healthy, and I think he's going to be a game changer. Okay. Yeah. Time now, just about 826, 74 degrees now. All right, police have arrested a man who is a suspect in the murders of six men. What police are saying about how they found him and what charges he could be facing. And still ahead, a Texas team behind bars after a police chase in Nebraska. What deputies found in the trunk of the car. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Acosta. It's Sunday, October 16th. Can you believe we are almost done with October? Halfway through. Halfway through. We're more than halfway. <laughs> no, I know, but it's just like, I, I don't, well, I, October is my favorite month of the year. Okay, so you know what? We'll go glass half full. You still have two more weeks, <sighs> and you still have Halloween. I, have so, I still have to do the pumpkin thing, the pumpkin carving. Okay. Ready to the decorations. I have to think about a costume. 
It's have just to you think know, about a costume. I still have to think about a costume. Right. Justin Horn, have you picked out your costume yet? No, but I feel overwhelmed all of a sudden. <laughs> a lot, I got a lot to do. I mean, Sarah uh, just told us October is almost over. <laughs> no kidding. Uh, well, one thing we know for sure is that it's going to feel more like October as we get into tomorrow. Cold front comes through tonight, brings about big changes. Right now, we're sitting at 74 degrees, 71 in Kerrville, 68 Rock Springs, 72 in Carrizo Springs. It's a warm, muggy morning. If you're going out for the run, know that it is going to be uh, feeling a little bit like summer, at least at the moment. 91 degrees today, but look at the changes next couple of days. 65 Monday, 60% chance of showers will be cloudy. We get gusty winds. And uh, we'll see some slow clearing on Tuesday, but highs only in the upper 60s. So what a change uh, with this frontal boundary. And it is about time. As we look at the live radar, there are some showers out there well to our north. We'll be keeping a close eye on the radar throughout the day. There could be some showers that work their way into the hill country later this afternoon. And this evening, we'll also be watching for a few storms coming off the mountains of Mexico near uh, Del Rio and Eagle Pass. There is a possibility there for a few storms. So here's how it plays out today. 81 degrees at 11 o'clock, 84 noontime. Then we're up around 90 by 3 p.m., 91 by 4 p.m. with a 10% chance of rain. And then we'll bring it up to a 20% chance of rain as we head into this evening. And then much better rain chances by tomorrow. We'll time all that out for you. We'll talk more about temperatures and how the rest of the work week looks. That's coming up in just a few minutes. Justin, thank you. Two people are now behind bars facing charges in connection with a drug smuggling operation at the Bear County Jail. One of those suspects, a former BCSO deputy. According to the arrest affidavit, deputies intercepted a phone call about an alleged drug exchange. It was, it was between a 24-year-old woman, Halisha Neely, and a 24-year-old inmate, DeAndre Ross. Deputies followed Neely from her job as she allegedly made a drug deal with a man in a vehicle. That man, 20-year-old Isaiah Palomo, was a BCSO probation deputy. Fellow deputies pulled him over and found stash cocaine inside some paperwork. Palomo has been fired. A police chase in Nebraska ends with a Texas teenager behind bars. So on Friday, state troopers arresting 17 year old Tyler Rowans. A police had been searching for Rowans and his mother who disappeared from the Houston area just last week. When officers pulled the teen over, they discovered the body of a woman inside the trunk. The teenager taken to the hospital with injuries resulting from a crash. Right now, the Harris County Sheriff says the woman's identity remains unknown at this time. A man has been arrested in Stockton in connection to a series of killings in the city and one in Oakland. So 43-year-old Wesley Brownlee was arrested overnight. Authorities say Brownlee could be facing charges for murders of six men that were linked through ballistics. The police chief said the arrest was made possible thanks to the community tips and the work of the police department. Police confirm that he is the sole suspect at this time and is believed to be the person of interest captured on video from the shooting scenes. Well, a terrifying situation in Wisconsin. Authorities there saying multiple people hospitalized after what they call a bonfire explosion. So this happened Friday night at a residence in the town of Maple Grove. According to the local county deputies, an unknown number of people were standing around a bonfire. They applied some sort of accelerant that caused the fire to burn out of control, causing a number of severe burn injuries. The names and ages of the victims have not yet been released. Sheriff's deputies still investigating. Well, back here at home, we can already see some of the events getting underway. San Antonio Startup Week is a seven day mix of learning events and building businesses. And of course, it starts today. So joining us in today's Leading Us A segment is Philip Hernandez, C COO of Geek Geekdom and Executive Director for Startup Week. Good morning, Philip. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Hi, good morning. Thank you for having me. So for those who don't know, Philip, what is Startup Week and what can people expect? So San Antonio Startup Week is a seven day conference that we put together. It's a celebration of all the startup ecosystem that we have in San Antonio. Um, in, in these seven days, you'll be able to learn about all the startups that are growing, um, all the resources that are available. If this has been a collaborative effort to show off our community. I'm super excited. So what events are you particularly excited for? Well, so we have five premier events that are happening um, every night. So on Monday, we have the Startup Showcase. Um, there you're going to be able to see 34 startups that are going to be here in our space at Geekdom downtown uh, at the Rand building. Um, and then Tuesday night, we have Trinity Stumberg competition. 
$50,000 prize up for grabs in that pitch competition. Wednesday night, Velocity Texas, a biomed and life sciences accelerator. They're going to have their demo day. You'll be able to hear what, uh, what those companies have been up to. Thursday night, Generator, uh, it's a cybersecurity accelerator, and we're going to hear about the six companies that have gone through that accelerator over the past few weeks. Each one has had $100,000 um, invested in them. So excited to hear what they've got going on. And then lastly, on Friday night, uh, we have Tech Fuel, a $100,000 pitch competition put on by Bear County. Um, so that's going to be over at the Tobin Center. And then mix through all of that, nine to five every single day, we're going to have programming that's going to be sprinkled around downtown San Antonio. All right, Philip. So we've done stories with Tech Fuel, with Velocity Texas, with Port San Antonio, and really so many businesses along that Houston corridor area. How have you seen tech and the sector grow here over the last decade? And from your perspective, what comes next? So, I mean, the growth that I've seen in tech is that a lot of folks have been embracing it. Um, I've seen, you know, we've seen some folks just reimagining how they do things, everything from uh, one of our founders, Ashley Bird with Blooming with Birdie, kind of reimagining how we incorporate screen time um, in education with the young ones and how we make how we make the connection between screen time and real life. And then we've also seen from another one of our founders, Alberto Pino with uh, Broston Homes, um, they've been able to to bring bring folks to tour and purchase manufactured homes um, by doing virtual reality tours. So um, we've really seen companies just inject tech wherever they can to modify those solutions and uh, and help solve those problems. Where I think it's going next is more collaboration, more communication, um, and we're just going to see tech kind of uh, help to reimagine how we solve problems. How does San Antonio tech startup compare to the bigger metroplexes uh, like Houston area or even Austin, um, can we hang or, or is it a competition? Like, how are we doing? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, oftentimes, you know, when folks are comparing us to other cities, they say like, oh, how can San Antonio be more like Austin or be more like, like Dallas or Houston? And I think now's the time that San Antonio is San Antonio. We can stand alone. Um, we do have a strong and vibrant startup ecosystem. Um, and, you know, what, what really shines here is our culture. The culture in San Antonio, um, especially in the startup scene, everybody wants to lift each other up. There's a lot of collaboration, and you don't really see that a lot of other places like we see it here in San Antonio. I've witnessed it on my own. I've seen uh, companies and founders help each other grow, um, and, and that's, I think, going to be our differentiator in San Antonio. All right, so, Philip, make the pitch. If anyone was thinking about a place to start their business, why should they pick San Antonio? Absolutely. San Antonio, well, first off, it's affordable to come to San Antonio and live in our city. We have a beautiful downtown. Um, it's very walkable. There's lots of space. There's tons of historic buildings that um, you, you come to San Antonio, you can get a corner office and have your founder set up, have your employees set up. And, and we just have a vibrant culture that is um, always evolving. Um, so there's lots to do here. It's a great place to raise your family. Um, and, and if you haven't realized the resources that we have at our disposal, these next seven days will show you. Um, we have resources for marketing, for funding, employees, um, all that kind of stuff. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I think San Antonio is a great place to grow your startup, and we've seen it happen. All right, Philip. Well, I'm sold on San Antonio, but I'm a little biased. Uh, thank you so much for joining us this morning, and good luck with y'all's week. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Philip. Time now, just about 839, 74 degrees out. All right, the Grammy Award winning duo Silk Sonic has withdrawn their album for Grammy consideration. We'll tell you why the duo decided this was best. Coming up, we're going backstage to Transylvania to give you the behind the scenes look at the local production of Rocky Horror Picture Show. And Justin Horn is in the building. He's got some great news for anyone who loves the cooler temps. And for so many of you out there who have just been waiting and waiting for this rain, we're going to check in with Justin in just a few moments. The bombshell conclusion of the January 6th hearings after a surprise subpoena. Will Trump testify today? Tough questions for Adam Kinzinger. Plus the exit interview. Dr. Anthony Fauci. No question. Off limits on ABC's This Week. The number one news and politics show on Sunday mornings. Welcome back. A unique production in San Antonio bringing live interactions from center stage right to the audience. The Rocky Horror Picture Show musical is coming to the Harley Quinn 
Theater after 47 years, and this time they want you to say the lines with them. Producer Alexis Page gives us a backstage look at the show. and it's time for you to get your tickets to the local production of Rocky Horror Picture Show. What I love about Rocky is honestly, it just invites anyone and everyone who might feel marginalized, who might just feel a little odd, and it brings everybody into a close-knit family and encourages their individuality. And I mean, that's why I think people flock to it because authenticity, frankly, is what everyone craves. It's not your typical musical theater experience. It is very interactive, but you know, we'll get you on your feet, we'll ask you to sing along. It's a totally different experience every time you see it. A big part of the show is the call outs, which is when the audience interacts with the actors and kind of sets the tone as well. So it's always going to be a different experience, but bring your imagination and get ready to have a lot of fun. I hear you wish to learn the time walk. I do. It's just a jump to the left. for showtimes and ticket information. Alexis Page, KSAT 12 News. Great job out there, Alexis. Look that at her. Was, that was really impressive. I've awesome. not been like that. That looks I, exciting. So the Grammy award-winning duo Silk Sonic withdrawing their album An Evening with Silk Sonic from consideration from the Grammy's 2023 ceremony. So Silk Sonic won four Grammy awards earlier this year for the track Leave the Door Open, including Record of the Year and Song of the Year. In a statement, Bruno Mars, who was in the duo with Anderson Pack, said being awarded at last year's ceremony and performing not once but twice was more than enough, saying, quote, we'd be crazy to ask for anything cool. more. Silk Sonic's representatives have not yet responded to requests for further comment. All right, so maybe they're like, look, we've won enough. Let's give someone else the spotlight. Yeah, good for them. Good for them. Great All album, right. too. So speaking of spotlight, Justin Horn. You're in the spotlight today. You got some great news for us. Yeah, I think everyone's kind of excited about a change in the weather. It's been a long time coming, and we know some rain would go a long way to helping us as well. Let's take a look at the drop monitor. This came in, of course, on Thursday, but it shows just how bad things are around here. That maroon color, the exceptional drought, and really it's hit northeastern Bear County and New Braunfels, San Marcos pretty hard, Seguin as well, but even all of San Antonio is within the extreme drought. Uh, any sort of rain at this point would uh, do a lot of good. We would love a really good downpour. There's a chance for that tomorrow. I don't think the rainfall totals are going to be just exceptionally high, but we could see half an inch to an inch in some spots. And as we look at the temperatures across the state, well, we're in the 70s here, but you go up into North Texas, there are some 50s. That is our frontal boundary. That is the front that will bring about all the changes as it moves in tonight. We expect it sometime around midnight. The cool air lags a little bit behind it, but it'll be shifting in during the day tomorrow. 58 Lubbock, 53 Amarillo, 63 Wichita Falls, 64 Dallas, and then 70s out ahead of this front. You go north, the air is even colder. This is that cold air mass. It's kind of surging south. 24 Casper, 29 Bismarck. And we'll feel some of that cooler air as we get into tomorrow. You can see all the rain that's associated with the front. Scattered showers already from Midland, Odessa up to Lubbock and Amarillo over towards the Dallas Fort Worth area. We're still dry here, but I think we'll start to see a few showers developing in central Texas by late this afternoon. There's a flood watch also, I should point out, for parts of West Texas where they could see some pretty heavy rain out of all of this. We're also going to watch for the potential of a couple strong storms this afternoon along the Rio Grande. Some of these storms coming out of Mexico could pack a punch, one or two of them. I think that this is a pretty low risk, but it is there. We do need to point it out. Uh, anything that develops that uh, would be on the strong side, it would be hail and gusty winds that we need to watch out for. As we go outside for you, mostly cloudy, sun starting to shine through, 75 degrees Stinson, Stinson 75 Kelly, 73 at Randolph, 72 Kerrville, 73 Pleasanton, so the numbers pretty consistent around the area. 
and that's due to cloud cover and, and moisture and temperatures will start to rise here soon. Uh, look at the dew points in the low 70s. That's very sticky air. And so uh, it is going to be a, a humid day. Here's a look at the forecast. Uh, by 5 o'clock, we'll start to add in a couple of showers and storms, 20% chance, but our rain chances go up significantly as we get into tonight around midnight as that front starting to come through. And then some good chances of rain as we get into tomorrow morning. The morning commute has the potential to be a little bit messy and it's going to be cooler by sunrise tomorrow and then temperatures may fall throughout the day. I think by the end of the day we could see temperatures in the mid 60s, maybe even cooler than that. Still a 40% chance of rain at four o'clock and then rain chances will start to taper off Monday night. And as we look at rainfall potential again, half an inch up to an inch, maybe in some of these spots here around San Antonio as you go east. Actually, the numbers will be a little bit lower as you go west. They jump up and it's around Del Rio and Eagle Pass where the totals could be up to three inches of rain. 81 degrees at 11 o'clock, 84 noontime. We'll go partly cloudy this afternoon. 90 at 3 o'clock, 91 high temperature. There's that 20% chance of rain as we head into this evening. And then tomorrow, very, very different. Lots of clouds, rain around, windy conditions. Temperatures start off near 70 in the morning, but I think they probably fall into the mid 60s by dinner time. And then eventually into the 50s by Tuesday morning. Not only that, it's going to be a windy day. We'll see gusts close to 30 miles per hour out of the north coming up tomorrow. And uh, the clouds will stick around on Tuesday too for a while. So that'll keep temperatures down 68. It's not until Wednesday that the sun pops back out uh, at least full force. And we'll get those temperatures up to 72. But with clear skies Wednesday morning, 47, the projected low, 49 Thursday morning. And really nice weather to finish out the work week, but tomorrow will be somewhat of an active day. Can't wait. Thank you so much, Justin. Thank you. As if he's responsible for this. <laughs> weather wizard, Justin Warren. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Time now, 850, 75 degrees out. Are you in a relationship that feels bad or scary? So coming up tomorrow on GMSA, how, is, how to spot a toxic relationship and what to do about it. A class that hasn't happened in the past two years because of the pandemic is now back. It's a free American Sign Language class and it's being held today. Taught by MacArthur American High, High School Language Honor Society students. The classes are free and open to the public. This is going to be every Sunday from 3 to 4 p.m. located at the Brook Hollow Library. That's on 5, 530 Heimer Road. They will be going on until November 20th. If you plan on attending, you'll be learning the basics of ACL and deaf culture. All right, we have a big Sunday. Yesterday, we had a huge Saturday. Talk about some upsets out there, but shouts to UT. Getting a big win over Iowa State. Some games to watch today. Jets, Packers, that'll be interesting. Remember, Packers coming off that London game where they lost to the Giants. No one's happy about that. Bills and Chiefs, this is is a rematch of last year's championship game determined. <sighs> Very exciting. And of course, Sunday Night Football, the game we have been waiting for. Cowboys, hmm. Eagles. Sarah Spivey, who you got? Or Sarah Costa, who you got? <laughs> well, I'm going to go for the Cowboys. Okay. I know you're an Eagles fan. Yeah, Justin, who you got? Eagles, Cowboys. Cowboys are in a roll, man. Yeah. I know. So we'll see. It's hard to pick against them right now. Just saying. Okay, we do need to alert you about a crash. This is on I-10 at Hackberry. This is eastbound. The freeway is still shut down, so all traffic is being uh, forced to exit there onto the service road. Serious accident. We don't know how much longer it'll be closed down, but that may cause some traffic issues. Planning forecast, 91 degrees today. There's a small chance for some showers and storms this afternoon, but if that front comes through tonight, that brings about the big changes. Cooler tomorrow, windy, cloudy, chances for showers and storms. And still some clouds on Tuesday, but a great week thereafter. Cannot wait. Thank you so much, Justin. Yep, Justin, thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your Sunday. Go Cowboys.